Looking for ways to prevent diabetes? Ask a dietitian. There's good news that being active and following a healthy eating pattern can prevent or delay the development of diabetes up to 70%. One of the first things you want to understand is how diabetes is diagnosed. So there's two tests that can be ordered that will give your doctor or nurse practitioner the information they need to see if you have diabetes or prediabetes or if your sugar is within the normal ranges. So the first test is A1C. This is a three month average of the amount of sugar that sticks onto the red blood cells in your bloodstream over a three month period. And a range of six to 6.4% is diagnostic of a pre-diabetes range. An A1C level greater than 6.5% is where your doctor or nurse practitioner would diagnose you with diabetes. The other test that we use is called the oral glucose tolerance test, and this is testing your sugar before as well as two hours after you drink a sweet drink with 75 grams of carbohydrate. So a reading of a fasting sugar between a 6.1 to 6.9 millimoles per liter would be classified as prediabetes, and a two-hour sugar reading greater than 7.8 millimoles per liter would be classified as prediabetes as well. Again, your doctor would use this information to have a discussion with you about whether or not you have diabetes or prediabetes. But it's also important to know what changes are happening in the body. So when it comes to the pancreas and the muscles and organs and the liver, there's changes happening at all of those sites. So in diabetes prevention or prediabetes, the pancreas, there's changes happening to the production of insulin that's coming out of the pancreas. There's also more resistance in the muscles and brain and organs to take in that insulin and sugar to be used for energy. And thirdly, the liver is starting to miscalculate and to release stored sugar back into the bloodstream inappropriately when there's more than enough sugar floating around in the bloodstream. And this all can lead to high blood sugars. The other important information piece for you is to know risk factors for diabetes. What are the risk factors that increase your risk of developing diabetes? And that is genetically having a parent or sister or brother with diabetes. There's also increased risk if there's gestational diabetes or if you've given birth to a baby that weighed greater than nine pounds at birth. As well, certain cultural groups are at slightly higher risk of diabetes. If you're from African, Arab, Asian, Hispanic, Indigenous, or South Asian population, that may be something to watch for um, the risk of diabetes, as well as certain health conditions such as high blood pressure, high cholesterol, polycystic ovarian syndrome, depression, bipolar, um, schizophrenia, and sleep apnea are also linked with higher rates of diabetes. So it's also important to watch for signs or symptoms that your blood sugar could be going higher. One of the most common symptoms is feeling fatigued or tired, starting to feel thirstier than normal. You may find you're craving sweet foods. You may notice your weight changing. It perhaps may be going up a bit or even down. You may notice wounds or infections that are taking a long time to heal, or you may find you're running to the bathroom urinating more often. So what can you do to prevent diabetes? One of the first strategies is around activity. So staying active actually helps dramatically improve the sensitivity of your muscles to take in the insulin and the sugar. And recommendations are for 30 minutes a day of active activity, walking, swimming, dancing, bike riding, whatever you like to do. As well, you're also trying to break up long periods of sitting time which can worsen insulin resistance in the tissues. And so if you're sitting for more than an hour, we do encourage you to get up and move around for at least one or two minutes. And the third category of activity you might want to consider is resistance exercise. So doing five, 10 minutes of resistance exercises, arms, abs, leg, you know, resistance bands exercises, for example, is very effective at enhancing that sensitivity in the muscle to pull in that insulin and sugar more efficiently. What else can you do to prevent diabetes? Well, how you eat and when you eat and what you eat are other strategies you can do. So one concept is to remember the rule of threes. Aim for three regular meals a day. Try to space them every three, four hours apart. And when you're eating, try to consume at least three food categories at each meal to give you the variety of vitamins and minerals that you need. 
Going too long without eating can bring on low blood sugars and symptoms like sweating and fast heart rate and feeling shaky and dizzy and may increase risk of falls and can affect reaction time and driving safety. So it's important to have regular meals throughout the day. In addition, eating regular meals can help prevent overeating later on in the evening. So when it comes to eating to prevent diabetes, you don't need to follow a special diet or restrict carbohydrates. Managing diabetes is about learning about the foods that affect your blood sugars and how to balance those foods throughout the day. Knowing which foods affect your blood sugars is the first step. Foods such as fruits have natural sugar called fructose, and grain products like breads and cereals and pastas have starch, which breaks down to glucose, and milk and yogurt have lactose, which is also a type of carbohydrate. These foods provide important nutrients like vitamins and minerals and, and magnesium and calcium and carbohydrate foods together with protein foods help to make serotonin, an important neurotransmitter in our brains that helps with mood regulation, motivations and feeling of joy. Having too little carbohydrate can make you feel constipated and cranky and may impact on your ability to exercise, think clearly and effectively. So all of these foods require the hormone insulin to carry the sugar into the cells in your body. One of the first things you can do to reduce um, your risk of developing diabetes and improve blood sugar is to minimize sweets and sweet drinks. Sugars and high fructose corn syrup are the sugars commonly found in baked goods and sweet drinks, and this is the type of sugar we are trying to reduce as many of us are consuming too much added sugar. So this added sugar would be sugar in desserts, for example. It's also the added sugars in some of the sweet drinks we may consume, such as pop, juice, and the sugars we add to tea or coffee. Another tool you may find helpful is the glycemic index tool from Diabetes Canada available at www.diabetescanada. The glycemic index tool tells you which carbohydrate foods will give you better blood sugar readings. It's designed like a traffic light with a green light foods, yellow light foods, and red light foods. Picking foods in the green light column will give less of a rise in your blood sugars compared to foods in the red light column. So you're trying to pick foods in the green light column more often. So as an example, looking at bread choices across the different uh, lights, you can see that sourdough bread in the green light will give much less of a, a sharp jump in your blood sugars and more sustained energy than a slice of white bread, which is in the red column. And you can use this to compare multiple different carbohydrates from different cereals, different potatoes, different grain sources, as well as different fruit sources. So this may be a tool you find very valuable. So how much should you eat to reduce the risk of diabetes? Using a plate planner is an excellent tool to help portion your plate so that you are getting some whole grains on your plate. We usually aim for a quarter of the plate to be whole grains or the size of your fist is another way to estimate your portion of whole grains, whether that's rice, pasta, potato, or bread. Protein should be the size of your palm or another quarter of your plate, and you want to have a variety of different proteins, including animal proteins like meat, chicken, fish, eggs, as well as plant proteins like beans, nuts, and seeds. The other half of the plate, you want to aim for half of the plate, vegetables. Most of the vegetables we are encouraging are very low in sugar. We don't need to worry about them having a negative effect on your blood sugar. And fruits, we're encouraging two or three fruits a day. As well, when you're having a meal, drizzling a little bit of a healthy fat on your grains, such as your potato or your rice or your pasta, may help delay how quickly the sugar from that food enters the bloodstream and will give you a better blood reading. But most importantly, it, what you want to do about preventing diabetes is to learn how your foods affect you. This is where you can take the two-day food and glucose log challenge. Record your food and fluid intake for two days and test your sugar just before eating and then two hours after eating each meal. You're aiming for sugars before you eat to be between four and six and two hours after eating, you want your sugars ideally to be between five and eight. Doing this type of testing will clearly show you which meals are being handled well and which meals are sending sugars too high. Follow up with your team. So connect with your team for personalized nutrition advice and to learn more about lifestyle strategies that can prevent or manage diabetes. 
Remember to complete your lab work one week before your appointment so it's available for your appointment. Bring in your two-day food and glucose log to your visits and also bring in any other readings that you're measuring such as home blood pressure readings as well as an updated medication and supplement list. In addition, here's a few other diabetes resources for you. Dietitians of Canada has a great library of resources called unlockfood.ca. They also have cookspiration.com, which has numerous recipes that are, are quick and easy to prepare. And Diabetes Canada has a website, www.diabetes.ca. So with that information, we hope this helps get you started with some changes that you can make to improve your blood sugars and prevent diabetes. Be sure to connect with your healthcare team to learn more.